Ram Runner, considered by many to be the most aggressive off-road package ever offered by the OE. It's the answer to the Ford Raptor, and you get to see it in action today on Truck U. Welcome to Truck U. Now, the last time we saw this truck, we were just getting started with our Ram Runner package, and at that time, we were really concentrating on the looks and the suspension. Well, we got the suspension all dialed in. That's ready to go. We came up here and we put these fiberglass fenders on the front. Those look great. We got the bumper all taken care of up here in the front. Now, today, you know, we still have a little bit more to do with all that, but now we want to shift the focus more to the performance, which I know that's going to make you know who really happy. Yeah, we've got that whole Baja look, and it's going to perform like in terms of suspension, but now we got to give it some power. So what we're going to do is add a new supercharger kit, we're going to put some performance um, headers on this thing as well as a transmission so we've got an entire performance package that will let this thing perform like the real deal. Now it all starts with this Vortex supercharger that we got from RIP Superchargers. We've worked with these guys in the past and we love what these little things do to the vehicles. It's a lot of fun. So we got a couple things out of the way, got the mounting bracket ready and this is ready to start cramming some more air into that engine. Yeah, if you know, if you guys haven't seen a centrifugal supercharger before, from the first glance you might think well, it looks like a turbocharger to me, and it does up front because you've got that compressor housing. The difference is, is when you look at the back side of it, well, it's driven off of a crank. So you've got a pulley here, and it, the belt will tie it to the crank. So when you hit the throttle, it spins up this compressor wheel, and that's how you're forcing air into that engine. And this little baby right here is going to give us 425 rear wheel horsepower as well as 450 pounds of torque. Nice. Well, let's get that mounted and get the other stuff going. Dude. Cool. This particular supercharger is good for all of the fourth generation 5.7 Ram Hemis, and we're talking about 2009 to 2011, 15 and 2500. Now, it would be nice if it was as simple as just cramming more air into the engine, but the whole supercharging as a process is a tad more complicated than that. You have to compensate for all that additional airflow, and we do that with new injectors. Now, those came with the kit, and we've already installed those, so that's going to add more fuel to the mix. So, more air, more fuel equals more horsepower, and that's exactly what we're doing today. Yeah, like Matt said, you know, there's more to it than just forcing air into the engine. What I'm doing right now is installing the heat exchanger. What you've got is basically you've got some hot air being forced into the engine right now without a way of cooling it down because as this air is compressed, it creates heat. So what the guys at Rip Chargers have done is taking things to the whole different level. Yeah. In most street driven applications, what you'll see in terms of an intercooler is an air to air intercooler, which essentially looks like a radiator. You've got one inlet and one out, and what you've got is ambient air blowing across the fins to try and cool down that charge. Well, at Rip Superchargers, they take it to a whole new level with the liquid to air intercooler. Now, this is something you'll see like in a lot of racing applications, and what you're doing essentially is taking that same radiator, or core is what they call it, which is inside here, and you're soaking it with coolant. So you tap into the cooling system of the engine, pump it across those fins, and you can really cool down the charge. So you've got the hot air coming in, the coolant cooling down that air, and you're getting a nice cool charge going into the engine. And that goes back to what we always talk about. The cooler the air is, the more dense it is, and that results in more horsepower. And that's exactly the name of the game today. To give you guys an extreme example in the drag racing world, take an engine that's turbocharged or supercharged, and at, let's say, 45 pounds of boost without an intercooler, you can see as much as 400 degrees of air inlet temperature. So with a properly matched intercooler on that same application, you can drop down the temperature to 100 degrees. All right, this will work right here. Cool. This system is designed to run at seven pounds of boost. Now, right here on the inlet tube is where this blow off or this bypass valve is going to mount. Now, think about it. You're driving down the road, you're making all your boost, right? And it's all charged up in this tube and it's cramming down into the engine. But you get off the throttle now. Basically, what you're doing when you get off the throttle is shutting the door right there. That boost and that pressurized air has no place to go. And if it doesn't blow off, so to speak, it's going to go back into the supercharger and that could damage the whole thing internally. So you got to have a blow off valve like this for that excess pressure to get relieved. Yeah, once we get this charge tube in place, there's one last order of business with our supercharger kit, and that is to put on the filter right here to protect the compressor wheel. Now, 
this is what you get normally with the kit, but the thing is it's not going to work with our setup because we've got, well, our Ram Runner uh, front suspension on. And you can see the mount right here kind of gets up in the way and you can't make the bend to get in there. But the guys from Rip Superchargers, man, they got us covered because they told us about it ahead of time. They sent us some new bends, so what we can do is do a little fabrication work. We can get that filter on and all will be good, man. Our supercharger system will be all done. Yeah, we'll get all this piping taken care of. We'll go to break and when we come back, we can get up underneath this thing. Leaf springs over time can rust and break and need to be replaced. But through the late 80s, General Motors used rivets to attach spring hangers, making maintenance or replacement a real chore. To replace the spring hanger, grind down the old rivets from the rusted frame. Get a chisel and hammer and knock the bracket from the frame. Now you can grind down the rest of the rivets and the frame's clean. Get rid of the rivets for good with a frame hardware kit from LMC Truck. The kit includes grade 8 bolts to replace the factory rivets on spring hangers, frame brackets, and cross members. It would be a good idea to replace both sides at the same time. If one's bad, the other side is probably not far behind. This tip is brought to you by LMC Truck. Restore, maintain, and customize your truck with parts and accessories from LMC Truck. Now that we're throwing some extra power at this truck, we need the driveline parts to hold up. So we need to upgrade the transmission. And that's what we're doing with this 545 RFE transmission that we got from ATS Diesel Performance. Now these guys are known in the industry as having strong transmissions that are going to hold up. They do it for a lot of diesel applications and they make them for these Ram trucks as well. But one little bonus thing, a little fun if you will, was right here. This bracket that had to come out so that you could change the transmission. Now this goes all up in there and it acts as an engine mount, a differential mount and it ties into the transmission right here. It anchors right there. So all that's got to come out of the way. The differential had to come out before we could do the transmission work. That was wonderful. Yeah, this whole project is a bit involved, but you know what? I think the payoff will be well worth it. Now, Absolutely. when you're putting more power in a vehicle, you got to make sure you can get the power to the ground. And thanks to ATS Diesel, we're now capable of putting 600 horsepower to the ground as well as 600 foot pounds of torque. Now, the way you're doing that is you've got to get a package where the torque converter matches up with the transmission. If not, you know, it's going to be inefficient. They won't work together. You know, the, first of all, the torque converter itself, if you look at it, it's got a billet front cover on it, which means it's going to be a lot more structurally sound and have the ability to handle a lot more of a load. Now, when you talk about the inner workings and the upgrades inside the automatic transmission, it can be a bit cumbersome to explain. Even the most diehard transmission guy won't quite get it. You know, there's a lot going on in terms of the reworking of the circuitry of the hydraulic fluids inside of it. You know, they've changed the rates at which the clutches apply and release, as well as giving you much bigger surface area, much larger surface area on all the clutches, so they allow you to get more clamp load. What that clamp load means is you can apply the power, it's going to stick and transfer to the wheels. A lot of stuff going on inside this transmission, allowing us to utilize all that new power. I like it when you dumb it down. I appreciate that. Just a you little know, bit helps me out then. a little bit. Now, the biggest enemy of yeah. transmissions and the biggest cause of transmission failure is heat. And that's where this bigger, deeper pan comes in that we also got from ATS Diesel Performance. This will hold more fluid. That way it's slopping around in there and everything's staying nice and cool. It's got the fins on the bottom, so the air is running along that, keeping it a little bit cooler. Very cool. It's a nice bundle. In keeping with the performance upgrades on this particular vehicle, the next step is these American Racing headers. These are going to be nice, man. You take a look at this, all right? Here's the stock header, so think about it. As everything's happening, the exhaust is coming out of here. Well, right as soon as it comes out, it's getting crammed in there with the rest of it, right? It's not traveling very far. As this comes out, it could create back pressure in one of the other holes. It's not going to happen in these American Racing headers because, look, the exhaust comes out. It's got to travel clear down this tube, the better part of two feet probably, before it all gets collected right there and shoots out the back. It's all about letting this baby breathe. These guys know what they're doing. You know, they do custom headers for the big three, for Ford, Chevy, Chrysler, for their production race vehicles, the Copo Camaro, the Drag Pack Challenger, and the Cobra Jet Mustang. So they know what they're doing, man. And you know, Matt's talking about decreasing back pressure and getting better flow. Well, they even take that to a new level because if you look inside the collector here, there's a scavenger spike, which helps keep those gases separate all the way out. So yeah. you're not getting the, the cylinders mixed up and you're keeping the pressure flow in the right direction. Now they've got O2 sensors in place here for us so you can keep it compliant, man. Now it's just a matter of bolting this stuff in place. Yep. 
so we've got our American Racing headers bolted up to the cylinder heads and we're finishing off our exhaust system here. We ran into a little bit of a fork in the road, so to speak, because we need to go ahead and cross over that bottom of the transmission pan. Well, with that aftermarket pan we had on from APS Diesel, it gave us a lot more capacity, but gave us a clearance issue. So in this instance, I opted for performance and we put back on the stock pan. Imagine that, you opted for performance. You know, <laughs> you know that's gonna happen anytime you're adding multiple aftermarket and upgraded parts, you're gonna have to make decisions like that periodically, so right. that's fine. I think what we wanna keep in mind is the fact that this is the most popular kit from American Racing Headers, but what they are not is a one-size-fits-all operation. So if you wanna cram a lot more power into this thing and really get ridiculous with it, they can accommodate. We can go with bigger primaries up to an inch and seven-eighths. You can run a four-inch all the way out the back. I mean, you can go crazy with it, throw as much power as you want to, and they're gonna handle it efficiently. And if you're doing something wild and custom, call the guys up and they'll make something happen for you. Now this system itself was built to optimize low to mid-range torque and now the Y pipe here is a critical component in that. Now you got to be careful because some guys will want to go with two duels out the back and you know if you go overkill you go too big of a tube you lose that low end torque that's something that we don't want to happen with this setup right here. We're going to finish bolting this thing up and take a break we come back more of this Ram Runner project and this thing is really coming together. All right. How do you know if your injectors are going bad? If you think you have a bad or clogged fuel injector, check for smoke coming out of the tailpipe. Also take a look at your oil level and make sure it doesn't start getting higher as fuel starts leaking in through a cracked injector. A bad injector can also be noisy and cause increased emissions. Changing your injectors can be a 10 to 12 hour job. If you take it to the dealership, it could cost you over $2,000 to get repaired. One way to correct a leaking or clogged injector is by picking up Rizlone's fuel injector cleaner. This complete fuel system tune-up helps to eliminate noisy injectors and fuel pumps. Rough vital, hard starting, and its upper cylinder lubricant formulation will compensate for the lack of lubrication in today's gas and ultra-low sulfur diesel fuels. This tip is brought to you by Rizlone, affordable solutions to expensive automotive repairs. Coming in hot. Hey man, whoa, jeez, kid, you just threw a battery in. <laughs> you like that? Yeah, that, that's pretty cool though, look at that. Normally I don't get the opportunity to chuck car batteries at MAD, but this is no ordinary <laughs> battery. It's from Lithionics. It is a lithium 12 volt battery, man. What's great about it is it packs a lot of while up in that standard group 34 size. <sighs> now, you talk about the big difference in weight. Like this one I just pulled out, probably weighs 100 pounds, easily. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say more like 40, but Matt tends to exaggerate a what little happened? bit. But the, there's a significant difference between the two. You know, this one here, you're looking at 11 pounds. This is 10 pounds, and it's a lot more powerful than what you'd find in your normal lead acid battery. It's also got almost twice the life expectancy because this is good for up to 10 years where a normal car battery between four and six so you get a lot more life out of it and there's some cool options as well you know this has got what they call a never die feature so let's say you pull into the place Bruno's going shopping at the mall and he leaves his lights on again right <laughs> what happens is the battery will discharge 90% of it and then it shuts itself off and leaves 10% so when he gets back in and discovers that he's like oh no what am I gonna do it doesn't matter because all you got to do is turn the battery back on either with the button that's on it or the optional remote you still got 10% left in that thing and it's going to start right back up and you can get back to the house. Very nice. Another cool security feature is when you've got that remote is you can actually turn the battery off when Matt goes in to buy himself, you know, some new CDs or whatever it might be. You can actually hit the button, shut the battery off, and it's a good security system because if someone wants to steal the vehicle, they'd have to bring a new battery to do so. That's a pretty cool feature. Lithionics performance battery, baby. You can do this with a battery. Hey, Come on. You know what? And they're made here in the USA, and you know what? They're green too because there's no lead, no acid, so these are a pretty cool option. Nice. Now, Bruno, okay, look, big front bumper. What could be better than one 10 watt light bar from Laser Star? I'm thinking like 10. Whoa, hey, okay, baby steps. Too much? How about two? All right, two's good. Because this is going to be plenty bright. Look at this, dude. Yeah, these things put out a lot of oh. light. These are the 10 watt light bars from Laser Star, Ooh. and they've got the latest generation of Cree LEDs, which mean they're going to have the lowest amperage draw and the highest output in terms of lumens, man. So this will really brighten up the night sky, especially when we're doing stuff like we're doing pre run air, going out on trails courses because let's face it we're taking this thing there isn't going to be any street lights that trail is going to be lit up like you at the Christmas party man <laughs> let me tell you this is cool because these have race proven durability and they're also protected from dust they've got an IP68 rating so it's protected from dust and water ingress and they're submersible up to nine feet so if you accidentally dump this whole truck in a ditch or a lake or something like that at least you don't have to worry about the lights if we're nine feet under we got a lot more we need to worry about than the lights. extraction for one 
Yeah, right? definitely. Now we have to make a couple mounting tabs, put the top bar in, but it's pretty much done except for the wiring. All this is is a quick push in connector on one side, the other side we run positive and negative, and we are ready to rock. Then, then we can go to the back. That's right. Bedsides, right? Coming up, man. It never ends. Yeah. No, it doesn't. That's going to be bright, dude. So to finish up our Mopar Ram Runner body kit, what we're doing is we're taking off this outer steel shell and replacing it with a fiberglass one. Now, not only are we going to get a big weight savings dropping the steel and putting on some fiberglass, but we're going to get some clearance issues as well because the new body sides are going to have a little bit of a bow to them, and it's going to allow for us to get more travel. The way they're sitting right now, if you were to actually utilize the full travel of the suspension, the wheel and tire would bottom out up in the wheel well. This way they'll clear and we can use all that travel. Now, some of you guys might remember when we did the front and we put those fiberglass fenders on the front. It was a little bit tedious and a little bit tricky. You had to be really careful when you did it. Fortunately, it's a little bit easier back here as far as the work level goes, but it's just as tedious because you got a lot of little things you've got to do. Well, yeah, when you talk about tedious, you're talking about 100 or so spot welds on either side that you've got to cut off before you can get this outer shell off. And the way to do it is to get your spot weld cutter. So we're literally going to go to every single spot weld all the way along the body here and drill out the weld and this way we can pop that outer shell off. I, I think that's the last one. Up underneath the wheel well here, we just need to pry this out a little bit, and there's a little strip of glue going all the way around. So we just have to pry it up and pop that glue, and then once this is out, the rest should come off pretty easy. Let me get this out. I think there's still some glue in there. Uh -huh. There we go. Nice. There we go. Look at that. Hang that back on. Something like that, man. Yeah. Wait. Oh. That's going to look really cool. Now, yeah. not only is this going to give us the aesthetics we're looking for, but the functionality as well. The only thing we have left to do is trim out the inside of this fender well and we'll get all that clearance. But, man, this thing is really going to look nice. Yep. Not bad. Not bad. Welcome back to Truck U. LMC Truck is pretty much your one-stop shop for everything you need as far as trucks go. So we're talking about Chevys, GMCs, Fords, Dodges, going back to 1947. Now today you take a look at this. We've got an array of seat belts out here. I actually had no idea you could get so many colors and seat belts. It's pretty cool. Now, if you're looking for a retractable seat belt or just about anything for one of your project trucks, all you have to do is go to LMC Truck, check out one of their free catalogs. You can see they've got pictures, they've got descriptions, they've got exploded diagrams, so you can find the parts you're looking for and you can get it quick. Now, whether you go through their catalog or get it online, they got over 30,000 parts in stock, so LMC Truck has got you covered. This is the Easy Puller from Las Vegas Tool. And Bruno will tell you, this is one of my favorite tools to use anytime we're in the shop because I just love this thing. Yeah, Matt uses it any chance he can. And for good reason, it's really easy to use and it's effective. It's one of those things that it's like, why didn't I think of that? You know, if you've got a stuck bolt, nut, a seal, you want to pull a dent, all you have to do is you clamp on and you use a slide hammer. And it is great to remove just about anything. We all know somebody that's hard to buy a gift for because they either have everything or they don't want anything and nothing makes them happy, right? We all know people like that. This is the tool you get for that person. It's the Easy Puller from Las Vegas Tool. Everybody should have one of these. Anybody running a diesel these days knows about a lot of the issues that we're having with that ultra-low sulfur diesel, and that's where this comes in. It's the diesel fuel system treatment from Rizlon. Basically, this is a 5,000 mile tune-up for your diesel car or truck, and it's going to attack a lot of those problems with that ultra-low sulfur diesel. First of all, the lubricity. It's going to give you increased lubricity inside the engine. It's going to give you a cetane boost, which is going to improve the performance, and it's going to help clean out those dirty injectors. And if you're living up north, it's also got an anti-gel in it to keep that fuel from gelling up on you. It's going to stabilize and condition your fuel and remove the water from it as well. That's the whole idea. It is the diesel fuel treatment from Rizlone. And take a look at this. The cool thing is it's got the neck right there, so you pop off the cap, put the neck on, and dump it right in your fuel. Nice and easy. This is the Lanair MX200 waste oil heater. You know, with a unit like this, you've got a lot of good things going on. First of all, you're getting rid of that old junk oil, right? And secondly, while you're doing that, you're making potentially free heat in your shop, which is great, especially when it's cold. 
Yeah, you know, if you've got a shop that's generating waste oil, as most are these days, you've got the responsibility of disposing of it properly. And if you don't, you're going to get in a lot of trouble. Well, when you've got a system like this one air, you don't have to worry about that anymore because not only are you disposing of it properly, but you're getting free heat. That is a pretty cool thing. Another thing is nice, too. You're not running all over town burning up fuel to go get rid of your old junk oil, right? One less thing you got to worry about, buddy. That's the name of the game. Right here is the Lanair MX200 Waste Oil Heat. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speed.com or visit our website at truckutv.com. Hey, welcome back. We have got a ton of work done to this Dodge truck, man. We have overhauled it both inside and out, and underneath the hood, we've got a ton of performance upgrades. Now, we've got that supercharger kit inside. We've also got those new headers. Now, we're going to dial it all in, though, with this Diablo Sport tuner. We're going to make sure that we get the right tune and the right cal for not only that supercharger, but make sure those headers are matched to it. Once we get the engine all dialed in, we're going to turn to the ATS Diesel's co-pilot. That's going to allow us to, on the fly, match up our transmission to that engine. So we get the power going to the flywheel, going through the trans into the rear, rear and front wheels, man. I this thing's going to be awesome. Big, big news. The guy at the motocross track just called me. He said, bring it over as is. Let's as get is? out of here, dude. Yeah, don't worry about that. Come on. Details? No? Eh, nothing. I'm with you. Here we are at the Dade City Motocross Track, and they have given us the right layout to simulate some obstacles from the desert. So this is going to be the perfect place to do our shakedown run for the Ram Runner project. Now, Ram Runner recommends running a tire between 33 to 35, so we upgraded to these Wild Peak ATs from Falcon. They'll give us plenty of room in the wheel wells. That way, when we land, it'll tuck in there nicely and not bottom out on the bottom. Now that RIP supercharger we put on is making a ton of power and thanks to the guys from ATS Diesel, man, they've got that transmission working well so the power is getting to the wheels. Now, another cool thing about that co-pilot we got from ATS Diesel is the fact that it can work not only on this truck, but it can work on any truck's transmission. You want to get more longevity or better shifting, man, it'll work on any vehicle. Man, this thing is a blast, but we are out of time. We'll see you guys next week and we're going to stay out here and keep playing.